So, we recently had a live, a live stream with ACC Garage. And what come to find out, as some of you talked about and some of you brought up, was that you wanted to see more episodes throughout the week. Well, so here's what's going to happen. We're going to do two videos a week for the rest of the year. I'm going to try my best not to miss it. So with the content I currently have, it's just elongated. It's going to need editing, yada, yada, excuse me, blah, blah, blah. So what I'm doing is I just came with this on my way home from work is a little episode or series or something that might become part of ACC called a Taste and Tech is what the name of it is. Taste and Tech is pretty much, I've seen there's a lot of people with automotive stuff. Great to see that because that's pretty much the main thing of ACC Garage. However, I've also seen some interest in the alcohol and caffeine part of it. So what we're going to do is, is I'm going to talk first about when we're doing an alcohol or beer, whatever, we're going to talk about a technological piece. And after I feel like I've gotten bored or I feel like I've talked my whole sp my spiel about it, I'll go and try the beer. When it comes to coffee, what we'll do is, is that we'll set the coffee pot to go and I have to talk about something in that span of the coffee being made. Sounds simple enough. So this episode, I'm picking the topic because really there wasn't a massive definition of anything that anyone wanted to talk about. So what we're going to talk about is how to choose the proper CFM for your car. And you have to be honest with yourself. You really do. So how to pick the appropriate CFM for your application engine. We're going to say engine. So first thing you have to figure out, which we're not going to talk about today because it is a lot of math and we can do it another time is you need to first find out what your volumetric efficiency is, and just to check my notes, yes, the volumetric efficiency will be found in a percent. So ordinary stock engines are usually 80% volumetric efficient. A engine with a few nice little, you know, better heads, this and that, 85. So this is just rule of thumb numbers, 85%. And then race engines can be anywhere between 90 to 110, or even more. It just depends on how efficient you make your engine. So anyway, let's start out by using an engine that I know that I'm going to need a carburetor for, or something that it might need help with. So let's start with this. The Chrysler Wagon currently has a 650 CFM vacuum sec, actually no, mechanical secondary, Holly style carburetor. So I have my little calculator right here. So 440 cubic inches. You first need to figure out what your cubic inches are. Then here's the part you have to be real with yourself, is that you have to know what RPM range you're going to run. That car, probably not going to see anything over 5,000. So you take 440 times 5,000, which equivalates to 2.2 million. Big number, right? Ordinary engines, like I said, this is a stock engine. So I need to multiply that by 80% or multiply it by... 0.8, which will give me 1,760,000. Now, what do you do after that? Well, you take and divide that by 3,456, which will give you your CFM for what you need for your carburetor. So, for just going off the rule of thumb, my carburetor or my car needs a 509 CFM. They talk about not going overboard when it comes to putting your carburetor on because you can overload it, you can put way too much fuel in it, and then it's just going to be a pain in the ass for drivability. So anywhere between a 500, they say not to go down. They say to go up. So a 10% increase or a little bit more will actually help you out. So if I went for a 525, 550, I'd be okay. Now if I'm trying to cram a 750 CFM on there, no bueno. The 650 or the 625 or 650 I currently have on there is actually doing pretty good. It's not blowing black smoke, nothing like that. So this is just a general way of you finding what size of a carburetor you would need on your application. So you can use this and they have tons of forums and they have tons of things. And I do believe engine masters of um, Motor Trend went over this, but that's it. So pretty much for my application, I need a 510 and up. So there you have it. That's how you find out is by taking, once again, you take the um, cubic inch of your engine, which in my case was a 440, you multiply that by your RPM range you're going to be in, which can be anywhere between 3,000 all the way up to 10, your pick. And then you take 
And if it's just an ordinary plain Jane engine, once again, you have to find your volumetric efficiency. Rule of thumb, stock engine, 80. A little bit more hefty engine, 85%. And then 90 to 110 for race engines. You have to be honest with yourself. This is not going to help you out in the long run if you just lie. You're only cheating yourself, right? So what you do is, is that you have to cubic inches first. Then multiply it by your RPM. Your highest, your max RPM. And then you divide it by the percentage, which is 0.880 for a stock. And then you have to divide that by 3,456, which will give you your CFM. And you want to stay with close into that number. And that's it. So now we're going to move on to our first beer for the Taste and Tech, which I saw the bottle. I didn't really read it. I thought it was cool, but it is from the Columbus Brewing Company, and it is called the Go Kart Ghost Pale Ale. Uh, made here in Columbus, Ohio, uh, Columbus, Brew or Columbus Brewing has been around since 1988, and I have must have gotten a bottle without a twist top on it. Oh, no, oh, nah, it's a twist top. Dang it. I need to grab a bottle opener. Okay. I found the bottle opener. All right, let's try this again. All right. So once again, Columbus Brewing Company, Go-Kart Ghost. Isn't that just a cool little design? What's that say right there? Ah, that's the, it's a 12 ounce bottle, 6.1 alcohol. So, go ahead and get our glass. Let's see what it looks like. A Little bit darker. Hmm. Very nice. Okay. So, cheers. Mmm. Has a nice IPA taste. And if you don't know what an IPA taste is, there's a variance of people that will talk about this. Is that it either tastes like pine needles or it tastes like something else. And the something else varies. To me, it tastes like in between. It's not full on pine salt, but it's really good. And granted, you can get on my ass about drinking IPAs and everything else, but I like all beers. I like all alcohols. And I like tasting them, so I know if I do go someplace that doesn't have my hams or my Coors or my Bud Light or anything like that, I know something I can pick out of and go, that, I like that. So, give me shit all you want. Like, the thing with my girlfriend, she always gets on me for drinking the occasional IPA, and she always says she doesn't like the taste. She would actually like this because if you've ever had, like, an IPA, it's sometimes, like, really in the back of your throat and really bitey and really in your face. This is not as bad. This is, like, calm tones. Like, really nice. Great smell. I don't know how to describe the smell. I think. Oh, my bad. It is a super pale ale, so it's an SPA. There's a sales tactic, an SPA. Hmm. I'm just actually just trying to find notes or something to help you guys actually understand what this tastes like. Because I can only say it tastes like an IPA. Some IPAs taste different. Some actually do taste the same. But it's, it's a very mellow kind of IPA. It's not in your face. It's not kicking your ass when it comes to like, oh, God, taste like bark. Oh. Some of those I've had, and I will never drink again. Hmm. Nothing bad about it. But while I'm pacing myself, I'll get this back out. Cool design. Really awesome. And as you can see, Columbus, Ohio. Awesome, isn't it? Drink Fresh, 1988, right there. So check it out. Check out anything that's local. For me, I'm trying to do mostly Ohio State stuff because I'm from Ohio. And if I run out of Ohio stuff, which I never will because BrewDog, Platform, Columbus Brewing, always change stuff up. But if I do find myself to a beer that I even just want to go, hey, I want to try that, I'm going to do it. So that's it for this episode, for the first episode of Taste and Tech. I hope you enjoy this kind of episode. Let me know if there's anything you want me to go over or give my own two cents on or research and find out what the mystical world of the internet or my little brain has to show, or in my little world, what happens. So thank you so much for actually watching ACC Garage. 
and have a drink for me. And make sure to tell everyone you can. I'm not going to say like, comment, and subscribe. I'm done saying that. So the only thing I'm going to say to you is, if you like this show, you like these episodes, pass it on to a friend or a family member. Or even an ex-girlfriend, because I could be that annoying that you can annoy them with my voice and my face. So, have a great rest of your week. Have a great weekend. Drive safe. Nice seeing you guys.